All right, so we are here and we're about to do this mammalian heart dissection. So we have our nice pig heart in the solution here in the bag, which is, which is actually good. The pig heart's slightly bigger than the sheep heart, which I usually use, which is, uh, so this is good. We'll be able to see a lot more structures in it. And along with that, you have your mammalian heart sheet here, right, which has numbers one through 24, and it has a lot of the different parts that we're going to find. So, tomorrow in class, after we do the dissection, we'll be going through a lot of this on PowerPoint slides. So a lot of this may not make a ton of sense to you while you're doing this, but it's, it's still it's really good. It's my daughter Grace again. So what you need is your hearts. You need your dissection tools again. So I've got my gloves on, I've got scissors, my scalpel, my uh, forceps, pointer, and all these things are going to come in really handy. What we're going to do is we're going to use a little tray here. Right? We've got this set up with, um, with our cloth down, or our paper cloth down, and I have my phone. Before I start dissecting anything, I'll get my phone out and on um, so that I can take some pictures as we go through this. So, first things first, you gotta open the heart, right? So you wanna cut open this bag. You wanna make sure you're holding it upright because there is a little bit of it in there. So we wanna make sure we're holding it upright, just cut the top off, and we can pull the heart out while we keep the bag upright so we don't lose any of the fluid. Um, it's best to just throw the, the bag with the fluid away from the garbage. <laughs> Apparently we have a trick bag. Not gonna hurt him. <laughs> All right. Here is our heart. All right, so it is going, you know, there's a little bit of liquid. It's that's why we have these um, the pad set up, the pad that came with it, so that can absorb a little bit of the liquid. You can see here's your heart, right? It's pretty big, it's dripping a little bit. Um, if we look at the heart, we can tell the front from the back, right? And what I'll do is I'll lay it down here and take a picture of it. So you didn't touch this yet, right? So so the first thing we're going to do is take a picture of the heart. And that's the front of the heart. Now I can tell this is the front of the heart. To the back of the heart. The way I can tell that is if you look at this, there is kind of a crease that goes right down here. It's called the interventricular septum. Big word. Interventricular just means it's between the two ventricles, right? And septum, a septum just separates two chambers. So I always think of the septum in your nose separates your left and right nostrils. And so you have a septum in your heart that separates the two chambers, the two lower chambers of the heart. So this line separates those two chambers, which means that I can see that that's the left ventricle and that's the right ventricle. The heart would be just like this, okay? So this is the right side, this is the left side. The left ventricle is always much bigger than the right. On top of the heart, the two top chambers, if you remember, are called atria, the right atrium and the left atrium. And right on top of the atria, on the outside of the heart are these two things called auricles. Now, in your handout here on your sheet, number four says atrial appendage. Most books call that an auricle. 
Here's one oracle. It looks like a little wing. And that would be this the right side. So this is your right oracle. And you have one on the left side. Got my finger under that one. That's the left oracle. Right? When you cut this heart, you want to cut this way. You want to separate the front from the back. You don't want to cut down the middle this way. Right? You want to cut this way. You want to separate the front from the back. And what that will allow you to do is see into the left and the right ventricles. And what you'll notice is that it's really cool at the top of the heart, you have, you have these different chambers, right? You have these different um, vessels, I should say. So some of these vessels are, one of them is your aorta, one of them is your, um, one of them is your pulmonary valve, or your, I'm sorry, your pulmonary artery. And so you can actually t stick a probe in some of those and see what chambers you end up in, right? So one of the things to do once we open up this heart is you can stick a chamber in some of the, or stick a, chamber, stick, <laughs> stick a probe into one of these vessels and you can see what chamber you end up in. And that'll give you an idea as to what, what vessel you have. So I want to cut this heart again, front, I want to cut away the front from the back. It is, um, kind of beefier than you might imagine. It's it's a little bit hard to cut through. Do you want to cut through it? Do you want me to? Do you want to cut through it? Okay. So it's 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 I would go like this. So for those of you that are that are watching, I would cut like this all the way through it like that because it's going to be kind of tough to cut through. So move it out of there for you. Mm -hmm. Now see, take a little while to cut through, but that's okay. Gotta go back to the other side. There you go. Um, just, as you're pulling it, just take the scalpel and just kind of cut. So I would start at the bottom of the heart, kind of the point of the heart, and then you're starting to pull it apart. You're cutting as you move up towards the top. So when you have the heart open, it's going to look something like this. Okay, I'm going to take a picture of that. Get us, get us a still picture of that. All right. Yeah. When we're looking at the heart, I'm going to go ahead and just cut this all the way in half. So I'm going to cut the, the top so that we're just the half of it to the screen. So when I'm looking at the heart, my heart can see that you have one really big chamber, okay, and you have one small chamber. This big chamber is the left ventricle, small chamber is the right ventricle. 
the small, the left ventricle is always much bigger than the right. The left ventricle is surrounded by a lot more muscle than the right. Okay, and the, the reason for that is very good. You think about what we learned a little bit at the end of class last week when I drew the heart. The left ventricle has to pump blood everywhere, head to toe. Right? So it has to be really strong and have a lot of muscle around it. It's got to go, it's got to pump blood that goes all the way to your head and all the way to your toes. The right ventricle only has to pump blood to your lungs. Now your lungs are right there on either side of your heart. So the right ventricle is really only surrounded by a little bit of muscle, whereas the left ventricle is surrounded by a lot of muscle. The right ventricle is always really small. So right now I'm holding up the heart. This is the right ventricle, this is the left ventricle. It gets confusing if you're holding the other half of the heart because the left and the right ventricle are kind of on opposite sides of what you would expect. So don't worry about trying to figure out which side of the heart you're holding. Always, when you're looking at the heart cut open, always look for the bigger ventricle, that's always the left, and the smaller ventricle is always the right. Now, those are the ventricles. If you look above the ventricles, the chambers that you might be able to see are the atria. And I can see in the left ventricle, right, here's the left ventricle, Above that is my left atria. My left atrium going into my left ventricle, there's a valve. This structure here is the valve. That's called the left AV valve. And that is the bicuspid valve. So what happens when blood flows from the atrium down to the ventricle, this flat valve slaps shut. So that blood can't flow backwards, it can only keep going forward. You can see the valves, you can see what are called chordae tendinae, number seven. There are like little cords, little, they're called heart strings, right? There's little strings that are attached to the valve that are attached to the muscle of the ventricle. Those are to keep the valve from, from going backwards, right? So blood flows from the atrium down to the ventricle, the valve slaps shut, but those cords prevent the valve from going this way, right? They just keep the valve here because those cords are holding it nice and tight. We have those on both sides. On, on my heart, you have to, yeah, you have to see the, the other ones are on the other half of the heart because of the way that it got cut. It's really hard to, dip, it's really difficult to cut perfectly, but on, on the other half of the heart, you can see the heart valve for the right ventricle and the right atrium. And then, sure enough, you have your left ventricle leaving the left ventricle blood is going to go into the aorta, okay? And so if I leave the left ventricle, I am going into the aorta. I can actually put my probe into the aorta, okay? And you can see this probe here going into the aorta. The right where the ventricle goes into the aorta, there's another valve that you see, that's the aortic valve. Now that's the aortic semilunar valve. That slaps shut once blood flows from the left ventricle into the aorta, so into here. That valve will slap shut. And you have, coming off of the aorta, you have a couple of branches. You have your brachiocephalic, your left common carotid, your, right, your left subclavian. Um, so that is pretty much the heart. What else do we have? The, the heart itself, a lot of times you think of, um, a heart, I probably should have mentioned this before I cut it open. The heart itself has a base and an apex. So when you think of the apex, you think of like a mountain top, right? Is an apex, it's the top, the point of it. So the heart is just inverted, right? The, the apex is the point of the heart, but the heart is facing this way. So the apex is down here and the base is up here. The base is the wide part up here. So base, apex, right? We've got our here is, you can see the, the right oracle, right, on top of the right, because I know this is the right side of the heart, so I know that that's my right atrium. My right oracle is right above my right atrium, and I know that because the right chamber is much smaller than the left. Um, so the other, the, other, um, the other thing that I want you to do is to take your probe and to kind of go into some of the other parts of the heart, some of the other chambers, I can see that this particular vessel leads into 
the right ventricle. Let's see if I can get the probe back in here. Leads into the right ventricle. There. So we're going in here. And the right ventricle, leaving the right ventricle, will be the, the pulmonary artery. So you can find the pulmonary artery that way. So what I'm encouraging you guys to do when you're doing this um, tomorrow when we're, we're on Zoom doing this together is to take this, this blunt probe, right? This um, it's a wooden probe. And I, I take the back end of it, the, the end that's not pointy, and stick it down some of these vessels that you see and see what chamber of the heart you end up in because that's going to inform you as to what vessels you're looking at. Now, into the right atrium, you'll see that there is actually a, there it is right there, the superior vena cava. Can't see it on that one. Right here, superior vena cava goes into the right atrium. So you can see where that one is. Um, so that's one of the bigger vessels of the heart as well. So I hope that you can watch this before we do the heart dissection tomorrow. We'll do the dissection um, together at one o'clock tomorrow, and then we will go over some of the heart. And when we're going over the heart, when we're going through the PowerPoints with the heart on it, you'll be able to say, oh, okay, that's, that's cool. That's what this is, and that's what this other thing is, and I can, I can see that, and I can understand that now. Um, so if you have any questions, we will answer those tomorrow when we're on this, on this Zoom session together. And for now, I'll just leave it, leave it be at this. And I will see all of you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.